It's time for the 2016 MIAA Virtual Media Day for Conference Volleyball. I'm Katie Smith, joined by UCM head coach Flip Piontek. First things first, you have lost two All-Americans. Yeah. You know, for, and I know all Thanks coaches don't me. like yeah. to talk about last year. Yes, you're welcome for that reminder. And those were two big players for you, a huge outside hitter in Carly Soika and your libero in Annie Riley. So I'm assuming even last year when you knew they were seniors, the wheels were already turning. <laughs> what can we do to fill um, this void? I, I, <laughs> An old mentor coach of mine told me a long time ago to coach your team, the current team you have. And so last year, as much as I knew that those two players were going to be gone, I really enjoyed just coaching them and not worrying too much about the future. Um, you know, with Carly gone as an outside hitter, I, I think the attacking portion of what she did we can replace. Okay, it, It's relatively easy to find kids that can hit the ball into the other court. Um, it's the other things that she provided us um, that will be difficult to replace. Um, essentially, she started every match for four years for us, and that court time is very difficult to, to compensate for, to make up for. You, you learn by playing the game, and she was on the court a whole, a whole lot during her four years here, and she had a positive effect on the game every time she was out there. So th that experience will be hard to replace. And the same thing for Annie. You know, you, Libros, you want them to play defense, but Annie did so much more than that in terms of her serving and her ball control and the other things that she brought to the team. Uh, those two players didn't like to lose, and trying someone to replace that focus, that drive, will be the part that we'll work on this fall in the, in the preseason. But that's what happens, and now we have other people who have the opportunity to step forward, and I. I think they'll do just fine. So. Yeah, since the season ended, you've got to work with them a little bit in the spring, and you know you had some camps this summer. Are you seeing competition out of the returners and the new girls to fill those two big holes on the court? Of course, that's the whole. Good. Idea. That's the whole <laughs> idea. Yes. Uh, you know, we have enough of the re players returning that we're not starting from scratch. You know, as much as you want to say that Carly and Annie were the the core players on that team, and they were there were four or five other players who were on the court with them. And those four or five other players will be back. And so, yes, it's going to be hard to replace them, but other players will step in and we'll see how that works. You know, the competition for those positions, um, I thought this spring uh, Cheyenne did a terrific job as an outside hitter, and I think she'll be able to step in and do a really good things in the front row for, for what Carly was able to do. I thought both of our middles, uh, Casey and Maddie Jones, did a terrific job this spring. Uh, Mackenzie Harding had a great spring. Courtney Thompson in the setting position did a terrific job. So, you know, those core players coming back, uh, Kylie Holen, those players did a terrific job this spring, and so they really give me and actually Caitlin and the coaching staff confidence that, that things will be different, but different isn't always bad. It's okay. Any new players that you really hope come out and make an impact right away? Oh, I wouldn't Don't give away any secrets. I, no, I wouldn't have recruited them if I didn't think <laughs> exactly. they, could, could, they could play. Um, uh, we have a tremendous variety of new players coming in. Um, you know, in addition to the, the five seniors last year, uh, Haley Thompson was gone, so we had to get another middle hitter. That was kind of a late change to our lineup. I really wanted Haley to come back and have a terrific senior year, but physically she just wasn't able to do that. Um, and then uh, we lost Mackenzie Pankratz, who, you know, as a backup setter, was doing a terrific job, but both Haley and Mackie just physically, previous injuries kind of caught up with them. and. You know, from a medical point of view, the best thing for them to do was to stop playing volleyball, actually to stop playing sports. But trying to replace those two positions, in addition to the five seniors, uh, that means our incoming class has a tremendous amount of, of variety. So I have front row players coming in, and I have back row players coming in, and there's a, there's a good mix of those that some of them are going to have to play, <laughs> and some of them are going to have to play from very early on in the season. With such a history of success at volleyball at this school specifically, do you change anything year to year? I mean, I know every team is different. There's a different dynamic every year, but you know, what what do you do to keep that consistency up or, or you know, what are you expecting out of day one from them? You know, it, it's a really interesting question because particularly for a coach who's been around as long as I have, you know, I, this is not my first time around the rodeo here. Um, I, I try to change every year. Um, I, I, the players and the team, because of the nature of the team being different, you can't treat every team the same. You know, this team, Carly and Annie allowed me to have really a hands-off approach last year, okay? The, there was nothing that we needed to do because the team kind of took care of itself. 
this year, uh, Courtney and Maddie are the captains, and they're different, and they're going to require different. Uh, the players, they, they've done a terrific job this spring and this summer kind of keeping track of the players and following up on the summer workouts because those things are completely voluntary. But the older players, uh, their commitment to the program and what we're trying to do that allows them to kind of follow up and keep track of their teammates and see what what's going on over the course of the summer and so um, each team is completely different and you know I, I the approach that you take each year has to match what the needs of the team are so as much as the general scope of the volleyball program we want that to be the same. How we attack each individual season is completely different. Being different every season, how does that play into keeping up with MIAA volleyball because it keeps getting better every year? <laughs> That's an understatement, yeah. Um, in general, the level of play of volleyball at the Division II level in the 30 years I've been doing it has improved it's almost inconceivable to me to imagine what it was like when I first started doing this in 1982. Okay, it's just, it's not the same game. And the quantity of good volleyball players distributed across the conference is phenomenal. And that, the change that I've seen in volleyball over the years, in 1985, when at Central Missouri, if we would just roll the ball out, we would win three quarters of our matches just because we were Central Missouri. That's just the way it was. We had more scholarships, we had more money, we had nicer uniforms. We just didn't have to do anything but just show up and we would win. That is so far from the truth now, it is unbelievable. Um, every single match that we play, and I don't, I've got, I, you know, I look at my schedule and you know, we're starting off in Pensacola, Florida and the combined records of our teams from last year at that first tournament is 120 and 20. Okay, so, so that wouldn't have happened in the past, okay? There would be no reason for me to go play teams like that. But the fact that we're going to a tournament the first weekend where we're playing the national championship, we're playing other regional winners, we're playing two teams that went to the Elite Eight last year, um, those things, the, the chances for those to happen in previous years didn't exist. Our conference from top to bottom, you can't just show up anymore, you have to play. It's so hard to win volleyball games now. The nature of the rally scoring, the quality of good athletes, the, the, the depth of coaching in our conference is so good that volleyball is a, by scoring a point, every time you make a mistake for the other team, it's a, it's a tremendous leveling factor. It evens the field an awful lot and it makes winning very, very hard. And to me, how you choose to approach that uh, is how it's gonna determine the success of your team. And so for me, Playing the national champion the first weekend should tell my players that that's where I see us potentially competing at the end of the year. And if I want you to be able to compete at that level at the end, very first weekend of the year, that's who we're going to play. Who the heck knows what's going to happen? <laughs> you know, who the heck knows? But no, the team will compete well, and that level of competition trickles from the 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 non-conference schedule early on right into the conference schedule because the conference it doesn't get weaker it gets better it teams it, it, it's a tremendous conference okay and you know the northern sun conference it is what it is it's in our region but i'll put our conference against any other conference in the country in terms of strength depth quality coaching players it's it's a terrific conference and i don't know i I like doing that, that's what I like. So uh, at this point in my career, the opportunity to compete, every single night you go out there is kind of why I do this, so it's kind of fun.